after the short shoes have the X Factor. Welcome to Canfi Planet, I'm Mac, and today we're taking a look at the first three products from Shochu X. Japan is home to storied firms, passing knowledge from one generation to the next since time immemorial. It is the land of master craftsmen who finally take over the top job after years of apprenticeship. Then there's Shochu X, whose founder, Kesuke Hashimoto, is younger than some of the spirits I've discussed on Kanpai Planet, and who's a graduate not of years amongst the stills, but of Nihon University Law School. Nevertheless, falling in love with Shochu during stints as part-time staff in an izakaya and interning at a Shochu export company led him to launch Shochu X in April 2020 with the mission of transforming Shochu. Japanese sake is having a moment worldwide, with exports growing and breweries opening up overseas, and Hashimoto believes that the time is right for shochu to take its place in the global limelight. He's driven to get rid of some of the domestic preconceptions about shochu and spread the word about shochu worldwide. Considering the fact that shochu is Japan's most popular spirit, there are actually very few industry disruptors out there. In fact, Shochu X is one of the few independent bottlers to exist in the space. Hashimoto has commented in interviews that one of the worst things in the shochu industry is that it's very difficult for newcomers to enter. And he's one of the people who's trying to bring a little bit of friendly competition to the space. Part of bringing new drinkers to shochu is changing its image, and that starts with the packaging. Typically, shochu bottles look like this, and not so much like this. Now, currently, Shochu X only conduct domestic online sales. The aim is to go global at some point and one day own a shochu distillery themselves. At this stage, we should answer the question. Shochu is Japan's indigenous spirit, most commonly distilled from either rice, barley, sweet potato, buckwheat, or kokuto sugar. Authentic shochu, known as honkaku shochu, is typically single distilled from 53 ingredients or ingredient families as defined by the alcohol definition controlling tax authorities. The flavor of honkaku shochu is influenced by the koji, the yeast, and the production method used, but primarily by that main ingredient whose taste is preserved by that single distillation. Typically, shochu is bottled at 25% ABV, so much weaker than whiskey or vodka. But recently, we're seeing an increasing number of higher ABV bottlings, some targeted specifically at the foreign export market as cocktail ingredients. What's the recipe? Excalibur weaponry. All of shochu X's current lineup is barley based. Now, barley shochu generally has a less distinctive flavor and aroma than other types of shochu and can be the most accessible for shochu novices. And if it's aged, wonderful things can happen in a manner akin to single malt whiskey. Oita Prefecture, Miyazaki Prefecture, and Iki Island in Nagasaki Prefecture are the big centers of Mugi shochu production. Two row barley is used and the grains are polished down to 60 to 65% of their size before use. So that's pretty much everything you need to know to get us to this point where I have these three bottles in front of me. How do they taste? Let's find out. Spread the X Factor by sharing these Kanpai Planet videos with all your drinks loving friends. We're gonna take these in order of ABV. So first up is Kizuna. This was Shochu X's first product launched using crowdfunding, which is an increasingly popular way to get ventures off the ground in Japan. It was released in July 2020, and notice the different bottle shape and stylings. As young as Shochu X is, the company has already gone through a rebranding, searching for the right look. And this new edition was released in November 2021. The naming of this product is interesting. Ki means hope, Zu means inheritance, and Na means positivity. Now, putting them together, the word kizuna typically means bond. So we've got concepts here like ameliorating the bonds between people and bringing hope and positivity for the future. I'm on board with that message. The liquid has been distilled by the Ebisu Distillery, which was founded in 1887. It's located in Asakura City, on the border of Fukuoka and Oita Prefecture, 
50 kilometers southeast of Fukuoka city, and Ebisu specialize in aged barley shochu. The barley they use, Hoshun and Harakanijo, comes mainly from local producers and is harvested in the nearby Chikugo Plain. Now interestingly, the fermentation for this was conducted in a manner akin to the Sandang Jikomi, the three-step preparation process that's typically used for Nihonshu, Japanese sake. And then it's been aged for five years in enamel storage tanks. Now the ABB is 40%, which is pretty high considering, as I mentioned earlier, that short juice typically bottled at 25%. The website has some pretty nerdy disclosure, including the fact that the koji has been grown on barley, and a two to one ratio of white to black koji has been used, and Kagoshima number no. five yeast has been used, and this product has been distilled using atmospheric distillation, which is the traditional distillation method. It's widely considered to be the best method to bring out the underlying flavor of the ingredients, and it's very suitable for aging. It costs 6,800 yen, including tax, around 60 US dollars for 500 milliliters. Let's check out the color. Pretty much water white on the nose. Well, the first thing to say is this is definitely a shochu. There's that sort of characteristic shochu funk, which is there, but it's much more mellow than certainly, for example, a typical sweet potato shochu would be. I'm getting some vanilla, some brown sugar, and some bread on the nose. Kanpai. Now the palate is absolutely fascinating. There's this deep, rich, sweet depth to the drink, and I'm absolutely loving the body that the 40% adds. Now it's quite funny, as a whiskey drinker, 40% is sneered at the lowest end of what can legally be called whiskey in many countries, while given that short juice typically 25%, when it's ramped up here, that body is adding some magnificent richness to proceedings. That vanilla is there, that bread is there, and it's joined by this mellow herbal goodness. The finish is on the short side, medium short I'd say. Overall, this is a fantastic barley short chew, easy to drink and loving that increased body from the 40% ABV. The tank aging means there's no cask influence, but the five years spent there has allowed a mellowing of the liquid. On to Kiraboshi, which was launched in November 2021. The word means glitter, and this is an interesting one. Around 40% of this liquid is cask aged, a blend of 15, 17, and 19 year old shochu aged in non-seasoned Solera sherry barrels. The remaining 60% is a mix of 10 year aged atmospheric pressure distilled shochu and seven year aged vacuum distilled shochu. Both of these components are tank aged. The vacuum distilled component is likened to the role played by grain whiskey in a typical blended scotch. It's also made by the Ebisu distillery and also made with Kagoshima yeast number no. five, but with 100% white koji grown on rice. It's 9,500 yen after tax, about 85 US dollars for 500 milliliters. And it's coming in at 43% ABV, which is the same ABV as Suntory's Yamazaki, Hakshu and Hibiki core range whiskies. Now, let's check out the color because this is quite interesting. Now, shochu can't currently be bottled as is with cask derived color. A spectrophotometer is used to measure the absorbance value, which has to be 0.08 or lower. I'm not making this up. It's been like this since 1961. This very pale straw color right here is exactly 0.08 absorbance on the nose. Now this is unlike any shochu I've nosed before. And you can absolutely tell, especially if you're a whiskey fan, that characteristic impact of sherry cask aging. I'm getting a lot of berries, figs, dates, prunes, and alongside that, characteristic wood. Kanpai. Ooh. This is lovely. Again, you've got that vanilla, but you've also got berries, raisins, white chocolate, and dried fruits. And it's very, very opulent. The finish is medium, 
even medium long and you've got some spice in the form of cinnamon combining with that sweetness that was on the palate. It's lingering and it's fantastic. Loosen up, let your hair down and join the festivities. Last and definitely not least, given what I'm about to tell you about this drink, is Rinwa. Rin means dignified or the only one, and Wa has a couple of meanings which evoke Japan itself and soft. Rinwa was launched on the 16th of December 2021, and it's a limited release of 471 bottles. It's 58% ABV, which means it can't legally be labeled as shochu because shochu has to be sold below 45%. So here on the back, where the other bottles say Honkaku Shochu, this says spirits. It's been double distilled and aged for 10 years in clay pots. The development of this product has definitely been influenced by whiskey because each distillation takes place in a different still. The liquid was produced by the Tenpai Distillery located in Asakura in Fukuoka Prefecture. Tenpai was founded in 1898 and was the first distillery to make shochu with 100% barley, which means they inoculate the koji on barley as well. It costs 27,500 yen after tax, around 250 US dollars, which is pretty punchy. Now to put that into context, that is the current price before Suntory's price hikes of the 1st of April 2022 of Yamazaki 18. Well, it's recommended retail price that is. The name Tenpai comes from the phrase Tenpai Chodai, which means great joy. Well, it's caused my wallet great pain, but will the taste bring me great joy? Let's find out. Color wise, this is also pretty much water white. On the nose, there's a lot of barley there. It's also quite bready and quite estery as well. I'm also getting a bit of uh, spice in the form of cinnamon, and star anise. Kanpai. Ooh, you can feel the punch from that 58% ABV, but considering the high alcohol level, it is, relative to that, surprisingly mellow. The characteristics of the nose translate very well onto the palate. That barley is there, that estriness is there, that breadiness is there, that vanilla is there, but it's joined by this not just deep umami, but also deep sweetness as well, like a rich honey. The finish is medium long to long actually, allowing you to enjoy that deep sweetness with a little bit of tongue tingling from that ABV. If you're a fan of cask strength whiskies, I think you're gonna enjoy this. So, head to head to head, I've got to give it to the Kiraboshi, followed by the Rinwa, and then the Kizuna. I stand alone on my own two feet. Long aging holds real possibilities for shochu, especially rice and this, barley shochu. When you're putting that distillate in a barrel or a clay pot, you're gonna be developing characteristics akin to whiskey. Now, when I've reviewed whiskey from Kyushu, which is where these liquids were made, for example, the first and second editions from the Kanosuke distillery, I've talked about accelerated aging in uh, hot climates with big temperature differentials. So surely, the same is gonna apply here. Age shochu is a relatively nascent market in Japan, but it's only going to increase its global appeal. So, should you buy them? Well, taste-wise, they're great. Packaging and presentation-wise, they're great. If you're just after some shochu, there's plenty of it out there for cheaper. I bought them because I was intrigued by the juice inside these pretty bottles, which is pretty unique. I don't mind paying for quality. I like supporting new ventures, and I believe that shochu is actually structurally undervalued. So if you're also prepared to spend the money, I believe you won't be disappointed. These are exciting times for Japan's indigenous spirit. Until next time, kanpai.